electing deputy president. It never ceases to amaze me that the ultra-conservatives like Senator Bernardi uh, very happy to talk to us about the role of government. They don't see any role of government in our lives, except for when it comes to social issues that you rely on the government to step in and regulate, such as same-sex marriage and other issues. But uh, let's talk about Bernie Sanders, uh, acting deputy president. It's a really interesting point. Uh, why, why has Bernie Sanders been so successful in the U.S. in the primaries to date? And it's probably the same reason that Donald Trump has been so successful. And this is an international hot topic. Now, I heard a really good summary from uh, none other than uh, Mr Kim Beasley on TV the other night on Late Line, and he said the reason that US politics seems to be going haywire, the reason is that, sing is that white males of middle income brackets have had no change in real income in the US in the last 20 years, whereas Australian incomes have, ch have increased by three and a half fold. But in the US, trickle-down economics has failed. Trickle-down economics, small government, leave it to the market. It has failed the American people. And that is why we are seeing such an interesting race uh, in the US primaries. Now, tax reform is partly about revenue raising. It's partly about balancing budgets. But mostly, it's about having a fair and equitable society. It's using the levers that we have in tax reform to get outcomes that we want, to have a more prosperous society, to have a more sustainable society. And my party, the Greens, have been very proud to have led on the biggest tax reform of our generation with a clean energy package, putting a price on carbon, trying to tax the super profits of mining companies. Now, this government ruthlessly and cynically campaigned at the last election to rip up $18 billion worth of good policy that raised significant revenue from our country. But what they failed to tell the Australian people was how they were going to replace that revenue. And they came in in their first budget, which we all remember very well, and they were going to attack pensioners, students, single parents, the sick, the elderly. And it failed, because they had no plan. And since then we've gone through a green paper process, a white paper process, and ruling in, ruling out constantly what we are going to look at in tax reform, we just want, in our party in the Greens, to have a sensible debate. And talking about sensible, clean energy package, sadly we lost, and now we're paying polluters billions of dollars. But we've done a good job uh, getting some outcomes on tax transparency. That's still got a way to go, but we're convinced we're on the right track there. We've delivered a small business package which has helped small business get up. They are the engine room of our national economy. We've delivered pension reform. That gives an increase in pensions to the least well-off in this country, those who need it the most. We've constantly stood up against the GST, not just because it's a regressive tax, but because it's lazy. It's lazy politics when there's so many other things we could do. And we've been out there suggesting these constructive alternatives for some time now. I'm very proud to say that my, uh, my partner in crime here, Senator Ludlam, has been campaigning on negative gearing now for at least 18 months, if not longer. I sat in the press club nine months ago debating negative gearing and capital gains tax with Judith Sloan and the Grattan Institute. This is something we've been talking about for some time. We have had costed policies on removing negative gearing, removing the uh, capital gains tax concessions and having superannuation tax reform. We've been happy to put those costings out there. We've been happy to lead on this. And I'm proud to say that I, we've now got the support of the Labor Party in a couple of these things, and it's been a constructive process that they've now joined us to campaign on tax reform around these issues. And I don't think there's any surprise, to me anyway, that when Adam Bant last week was on the front page of The Australian, saying that he was holding out a fig leaf to the government. Come and talk to the Greens. Come and talk to the Greens about super concessions. Come and talk to us about capital gains tax. Come and talk to us about negative gearing. Together, we can secure $22 billion of revenue and make this country fairer. It's no surprise to me that three days later, Labor caucus finally approved their negative gearing plan, 12 months after Chris Bowen started talking about it. Thank you for the leadership for the Greens, and thank you, Labor Party, for entering the fray. Now, we have a vision also for infrastructure spending around this country, and we have a vision getting rid of uh, fossil fuel subsidies, other areas where we know we can actually get up to $80 billion worth of revenue in this country that we can redirect into schools, into hospitals, where it's needed, into affordable housing, 
and actually look after those who are least well off in this society. Because that is the role of government, not what Senator Bernardi said. The role of government is, when markets fail, being there to protect those who are vulnerable. Senator Lyon.